medication rules, competition rules for every street drug use. The USDF has a therapeutic medication rule that allows you to use forbidden substances up until 24 hours prior to showing. So, but you have to have then a report from the veterinarian and a specific reason for giving it. And it has to be a valid therapeutic reason for having used a forbidden substance, okay? The FEI allows for some medication use, but it's much more restricted. This is an example of an authorization uh, for emergency treatment. This is an older form one, but it still basically gives us the uh, uh, understanding. If you had a horse, for example, on Sunday night that has a fat eye and it's supposed to jog on Wednesday, the veterinarian gives it a dose of banamine or maybe a dose of dexamethasone to reduce the swelling and inflammation. Uh, the eye itself is really not injured, but it's in really, really the conjunctiva and everything's really inflamed. If this form is filled out and presented to the veterinary delegate uh, at the time of the jog, uh, they may allow the horse, depending upon the experience of the veterinary delegate, unfortunately. But uh, depending upon the length of time from when it was given, the horse may be allowed to compete. So if you have a horse that gets injured and gets a medication within a week of competition uh, for some inflammatory <coughs> problem or a wound or something like that or a colic, uh, make sure you get a medication one, a form one done and bring it with you because it may be, you may need to use it uh, just to follow the rules. Uh, typically, if I see a horse that's been 72 hours or more since it's had a dose of banamine, we're going to let it compete. Uh, because, and we're going to submit that form to the, U, to the FEI. But at 72 hours, even though USEF rules suggest and FEI suggests a weak withdrawal, we know that at 72 hours, one dose of banamine is no longer affecting that horse functionally in terms of its soundness. Um, so it's just keep it in mind. Physical therapy, there are many devices available to veterinarians, trainers, and owners. Uh, for example, uh, uh, extracorporeal shockwave is used for pain control and, sti and tissue stimulation. The USEF and FEI have restrictions. Anybody know what the FEI restrictions on shockwave therapy is? Five days. So if you're at the horse show and you're on the grounds, we better not hear rat-a-tat-tat -tat within five days. <laughs> of you going to the ring or you're in violation of FBI rules. USCF is a bit more lenient. They require a three-day moratorium on shockwave therapy of the distal limb, the lower limb. However, they will allow a veterinarian, a veterinarian to treat the horse's back within, uh, at 24 hours prior to showing, but not within 24 hours. Right? So shockwave therapy can be very useful for the management of back pain. Say, for example, that horse that I showed you that had a really bad arthritis on the bone scan, um, that horse responded really well to management of periodic shockwave therapy and was able to continue to function and do well. There are other devices, cold lasers, thermal blankets, magnetic therapy, therapeutic ultrasound, cold therapy devices, and so forth. And the, the best thing I can advise you there is, is work with an experienced physiotherapist or work with an experienced veterinarian that understands what these devices are doing, how they can be used, and whether or not they're really going to be of any therapeutic value for your horse's particular problem. Uh, your money's best spent that way. Acupuncture therapy can be very helpful for the management of minor pain, I think. Uh, I think it's a good adjuvant therapy to joint injection and direct treatment of specific limb problems. Chiropractic may be very useful in helping your horse feel transiently better. I don't think it cures a lot, but I think it helps maintain and improve the horse's comfort, as does therapeutic massage. Massage, horses like it. I mean, come on, they, they dig it. And, uh, and, and, and there are some therapists out there that I think do a really, really good job. I think there's some others that really probably should have some nude side balls and bat swings along with some crystals and so forth that for the horse. And, could use those too and they probably would work about as well. But there are good physical therapists that are out there that can help you and help your horse feel better. Many vets are experienced in alternative therapies. So it's good if you can find somebody that is and that can give you a diagnosis. What are you treating? You know, you're just massaging your back or 
acupuncturing them, but you don't really know what's wrong with them, you're not going to really get anywhere. So it's good to know, if you can, what you're managing. And find a vet that will spend time looking at your horse and listening to you. Because it's very important for me to hear what you feel when you're working your horse or the problems you're having with it. Just quickly, and we'll be finishing up, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories such, such as bute, banamine, ketoprofen, um, uh, ibuprofen, uh, meclofenamic, uh, meclofenamic uh, used to be uh, called Arquel. Uh, those are all very useful anti-inflammatories for an acute injury. And, and they can really do a lot to reduce initial inflammation, swelling, and pain. And then coupled with physical therapy and reduced activity, many injuries often recover very, very quickly, and the horse is able to return to full function in a very short period of time. So mute's not a bad thing if used appropriately and used in conjunction with good physical therapy, ice, support, etc., cetera, uh, for a known injury. Uh, it's, it's when the injury is ignored and butte is used just to keep the horse going despite an injury, that's not such a good thing. Short-term systemic corticosteroids or non-steroidals for acute inflammation, as I said. Another drug that's useful for acute soreness, for particularly muscle pain, is, uh, is methocarbamol, uh, Robaxin, as it's called. Uh, it probably has a central effect, and it probably just kind of mellows the horse and quiets the horse and relaxes it a little bit, but it does um, seem to have a beneficial effect in dealing with muscle spasm and, and, and back pain and croup pain. Uh, you've heard a lot about the product called Tilburn, I'm sure. Tilburn is a bisphosphonate, which is like Fosamax for people, Bivona for people. Uh, it has an action on <laughs> cells in the body that there's, 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 there's bone cells that are called osteoblasts that make bone, and there are bone cells that are called osteoclasts that eat bone, literally. And osteoclasts respond when there's inflammation and trauma. And sometimes the action of those get a little out of hand and uh, when there's bone trauma. And Tilburn inhibits the function of osteoclasts. And so it may reduce pain related to osteoclasia or bone lysis, bone breakdown. And uh, it seems to have been a very, very useful drug for the management of, of bone uh, inflammation and bone resorption uh, pain related to like navicular disease, proximal suspensory desmopathies, uh, where the attachment of the bone is diseased, uh, severe uh, distal hock arthritis, uh, it's very useful. There's another product, newer product called Ospos, same classification of medications. It's a clodronate as opposed to teludronate, and clodronate is also very useful for the same things. It's a bit less expensive, and it's a little simpler to administer. My philosophy on the Tilburn is if I've had a horse for the last several years that I've used Tilburn on, because we've been able to get it for a long time from Europe on a special import permit, uh, I like to stay with Tilburn because I know the horse responds to it well. Uh, but Ospos might work just as well. And uh, so a lot of the horses now uh, we're using Ospos more on some of the newer cases <coughs> for bone edema and bone pain. Uh, and then again, drug rules. There probably is uh, a need to not use this too close to competition. The uh, FEI has not really laid out a specific um, uh, timeline. Uh, we've asked for uh, withdrawal recommendations. We really haven't gotten anything concrete, but my advice is one to two weeks at least. 